What's up, YouTube? This is John back with another episode of Engineering Awesome, and today we're going to talk about flashlights. Let's get right to it. So the reason why I want to talk to you guys about flashlights is because really you can do some pretty cool things with your, your flashlight. So I, as I've mentioned before, I work as an engineer. It's really important for us to have a really good flashlight to look into the dark machines uh, so that we can try and figure out what's going wrong with uh, some of the equipment that we use at the plant that I work at. So what I started with was just a Bushnell flashlight. This was like a Black Friday special, I think, two years ago for Christmas. It's a 350L, which I actually really like this light. Uh, I can't find it anymore, but this light is really cool because you can actually use the rechargeable, uh, the RCR 123s. Uh, that way you don't have to buy CR 123s. So this light is really cool, but it's got a big drawback that about every other light has got. And this is a personal opinion, but I really dislike the strobe function. Uh, it serves no purpose in the workplace, which is typically where uh, I use one. So that's why this one kind of got retired to more of a truck flashlight, because the strobe is an excellent function for emergencies. After that, I moved to this. What's really cool about this light is that it's completely custom. This is a solar force body. Okay, so you actually buy just the body. There's nothing inside it. And I really like that. In today's society, we're basically all about customizing and making something our own. And this is no different, which just amazed me when I figured out you could do something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and I'll show you guys what's cool about it uh, one piece at a time. All right, so I've completely taken this apart so that I can show you guys each component individually. This is the body. This is a solar force body. It's made in China, like most things are these days, but it's actually pretty high quality. Uh, this is basically the same size as the Surefire 6P. Now, I love this light, but I unfortunately probably will never carry it. My brother carried this with him while he was over in Iraq, and so it's got some sentimental value to it. But I love the size of it. I don't like that it doesn't have a clip, but these two lights, they're basically identical. The thing I really didn't like about this is it only had a momentary on button on the back. You pressed it. And then as soon as your thumb came off of it, it was no longer on. This comes pre-installed with a click type. But you can also hold it halfway down. So that, right off the bat, was awesome. Because you can install those. In fact, this one now has it. So, another really cool thing about this, because a lot of people are probably going to complain that this is too big of a light. It fits in my pocket pretty good and uh, it fits in that side pocket in a lot of carpenter pants. But this light can actually go smaller. That way you can use a single RCR123 or CR123 battery, which I thought was just awesome. And then this tail cap here just screws right back down onto it. Now, what this does is this does a couple of things. This gives you a, a level of adjustability that you just don't have in a standard light. Uh, another thing it does is it actually opens up the opportunity to get extension tubes, uh, which is really cool. Uh, if you wanted to stack a whole bunch of batteries on top of each other, you'd be able to do it with this body. You can change the heads on these. You can change the end caps on them. Uh, they're really cool, and they're a standard one-inch body light, so you can actually attach it to your rifle if you were interested in doing something like that. All right, so let's go over the next component on this. So the batteries on these are actually kind of neat. This is not a CR123 size battery. This is an 18650, if memory serves me correctly. Yep, an 18650. So... The body of this light will easily accept one of these. However, the body of this does not. And people send these off to have them bored. The 6P is a very popular light. But I don't want to do that. I'd rather spend 18 bucks or whatever this costs and just drop a, a battery in on it. So why this battery is important 
is because it's only 3.7 volts. Now with the rechargeables, that ends up being about 4.2. So you can use different style drivers. You can use some, some lower uh, voltage drivers and not blow them up, which I did in my experimentation when I stacked two RCR 123s. Uh, it just burns out, but regardless, it, uh, it cost me some money to do that. So I really like that you can use RCR 123s or this 18650 in that body. Now, here's where it gets kind of cool. So this is the drop-in. And these are called P60 drop-ins. Uh, and frankly, I buy them from China. I don't see a whole lot of point in buying them uh, locally because they're incredibly expensive. So I think I bought five or six of these thinking they're coming from China. They're probably going to suck. Uh, I'll just risk it, buy five or six, and uh, one of them ought to work. Well, they all worked. So I have a bunch of these things just laying around now. But what I did, which is kind of cool, is I actually replaced the driver board on this. Because the ones that came in these drop-ins, they were the same style that I've already said I don't like. I don't like strobe function. So, this board here allows me to use the 3.7 volt batteries, uh, and they make the same one. I'll link below to uh, the Q-Lite uh, from Mountain Electronics driver board and you guys can check those out if you're interested So it's got little stars on it and what you do is you actually solder a small connection from the outside ring Which is grounding to the star that you want and you read the website to figure out what that is uh, this one here has got four uh, Different settings on it, which I really like um, it's got a low medium, high, and then I believe this one has moonlight. I know one of these does. I almost always use the medium and never take it off of it because it does have a uh, memory function that works really well. Now with these, with the, the cheap ones here, uh, when you solder a new board on, uh, the heat sink obviously sucks all the heat up, so it's really hard to solder them on. So basically, just put a bunch on it, uh, file it down, and then you're good to go. I actually have changed out the LEDs to higher quality LEDs, so the only thing that is uh, still China, we'll say crap, but it's not really crap, uh, is the reflector, and then the spring, and then that brass, basically, uh, body for this, okay, the heat sink, uh, that's, and that's really it, so I really like these lights, uh, they've been incredibly functional for me, I've never had one fail on me yet. Uh, not at work, home, nothing. I drop them. I don't have anything happen to them. Now, this one here is a little bit different, like I was saying. Now, I'm not going to take this one apart, but this one's got a little bit more expensive driver board in it. So, what that driver board allows me to do, this is a 3.7 volt driver board, or 4. Um, this one here is capable of handling two RCR 123As. So, this driver board cost me somewhere around 20 25 bucks the one that's in that I just looked them up for you guys they're like four dollars and fifty cents so I think that the body was 1899 or so the driver was 420 450 and then you buy that drop-in and it does take a while if you buy it from China uh, you can buy those for like five bucks or you can get a USA seller and get them for like ten bucks that way if you're impatient you get it a little quicker now with this body, it doesn't actually come with a clip, and this thing is insanely expensive. It's like nine bucks, but it's worth it, in my opinion, because I've got like uh, around 30, 40 bucks after you count some of the LEDs I've swapped out just for fun uh, in this. So $40 flashlight, put you know a clip on it just to make sure I don't lose it. So uh, just that little bit of security for me helped. Uh, in the purchase of it. Uh, it doesn't fit on this light. There's too much of a gap here, but regardless uh, It's still nice. These are really cool to make. I really had a lot of fun now. I'm no electronics expert uh, My background is mechanical, but I had a lot of fun building these I think that uh, a lot of you guys would probably enjoy building one as well just because you might need a really good flashlight and uh, really not want some of the crap that you can get on some of the 
uh, commercial lights and maybe you don't want to spend 150 bucks uh, or maybe you don't want to spend as much as it costs to get one of those surefire 6p's and then not get everything that you want out of it so that's why i think these are awesome and i really do like the build quality of this solar force i think that really they're excellent and it does make a good weapon light now this one as you guys can see I've, I've dinged it up that just shows you how much i use this i drop it all the time i've dropped it inside machines inside cnc's uh, all kinds of stuff. So, really robust, O-ring sealed. I love these lights. So, I'll go ahead and link everything down below in case you guys do feel like building one yourself. And make sure that you guys leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this video. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if you did enjoy it. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you guys can see more content. I will say, I've got a pretty cool gun on the way that I can't wait to show you guys. I already bought a lot of the upgrades for it too that people recommend for it. So, stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time on Engineering Awesome.